What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, we have a reaction to Elon Musk, his current moves, and obviously the things that he's doing here with Twitter. So let's get right into it. You know, when I look at leaders like this, when I look at military leaders, when I look at entrepreneurial leaders, I look at leaders of sports teams, and you saw what Deion Sanders just did going from Jackson State, taking a job at Colorado. There's really three types of CEOs. There's really three types of leaders, in my opinion, of people that approach their career, their businesses, in their life. The first level of CEO, the first level of leadership, in my opinion, is number one, they're interested. Maybe like, hey, I start a business. Hey, I'll take a coaching job. Hey, I'll start a business. Hey, I'll start this new position. I'll run this department. I am interested only for a couple of things. Number one, what it pays me, promotion level, status, helps me pay the bills, helps me take care right now. But if you want me to go above and beyond, I don't know, man. If you want me to read books and personal develop, I don't know, man. If I want to grow as a leader, and see how I can improve my not only hard skills, but soft skills. I don't know, man. I'm kind of cool. I'm kind of chill. I don't really want a lot, but I'm interested in taking the job. If you need somebody, I'm your guy. Until you find somebody else, you want to hire me, I'm it. So if, number one, you're interested. Number two, you're committed. You know what? This type of person, they're investing in their businesses. They're investing in the career, putting everything they have into growing and developing personally going and developing professionally. They're showing up early. They're there staying late. They're there like at the office, like office furniture. Like every time we go to the office, they're there too as well. They're dependable. They have integrity. They're committed. They're looked upon by other friends and peers as somebody that can lead an operation. Investors love them because man, you, we got a committed operator and we trust our millions. We trust our investment. We trust our billions with that guy at the helm. Man, you are significant when you are a committed leader, you're a committed CEO, you're a committed person that's taking charge of their role. And then there's the third role, very rare air, very small percentage. And these are people that are absolutely flipping obsessed, obsessed. Nothing else matters. To me, obsession is I'm constantly thinking about this. I remember when I started dating my wife up to one, two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm obsessed with our new relationship. I'm obsessed with her. I'm obsessed with, let me make sure I say the right things and do the right things and let me make sure I get my life in order. I remember I was obsessed by having that day where I finally shared my wife, the good side of my life, and the bad side of my life. There was only one woman I was able to do that with. Why? Because I was, I was obsessed with her. I wanted to make sure my family was taken care of. I wanted to make sure we established our family based on values and principles. I remember talking to her. I was casting vision about what we're going to do as a married couple and what life is going to look like being married to me, what life is going to look like when I was raising a family and children together. I was obsessed by growing individually as a person. I was obsessed about growing my business. Absolutely flipping obsessed. It was an obsession that was round the clock. That's all we were thinking about growing, growing. You know, when people look at their cell phones, they're obsessed with music. They're obsessed with social media. They're obsessed with what's going on in the world. I was just absolutely obsessed. If I was on my phone with talking to the next person, finding the next customer, taking care of the next person, saying please and saying thank you, asking for referrals, giving referrals. And when I'm looking at Elon Musk, that's exactly what he is. He's absolutely obsessed. So if you have a goal, ask yourself, number one, am I interested? Am I committed? Or am I absolutely flipping obsessed about this? Second takeaway is you're never too busy. Absolutely, if you have a goal in mind, you're obsessed, guess what? You're never too busy. Oftentimes, especially during this time of the year, people say, oh yeah, I wanna change my life, New Year's resolution, I'll do that after the holidays. And what happens after the holidays? Well, I'll do it after, you know, because I'm busy because of Valentine's. And then Valentine's happens, next thing you know, uh, summer comes around. Well, I got weddings and anniversaries and vacation to go to. Next thing you know, they're in the next school year. Next thing you know, a whole year later, people put things off because yeah, they're kind of interested in, in, their, in their financial future, but not Elon Musk. He says, I want to make an impact now. Back to my point here. He took his money from PayPal. He sold PayPal, had a great business partner, associated with great people. And guess what he purchased? It wasn't, no, it wasn't Tesla. First company he invested in it was SpaceX. He wanted to fund his dream to go to the moon, to pioneer space. Then a couple of years later in 2004, then he starts Tesla. The company that he puts the most amount of money into was not Tesla. The company he put the most amount of money into was what? SpaceX. And he goes on to build Solar City, and now he purchased Twitter. By the way, all these four companies, multi-billion dollar companies. Guess what he's still doing? He's replying to everybody on Twitter. He's still involved. He's building a personal brand. He's dealing with a lot of different things personally, a lot of things that you don't know behind closed doors. And yet he's still running four or five different companies. More power to Elon Musk and a clear example today 
of an example that you're not too busy if you're obsessed about a goal, you wanna make an impact, you wanna make a difference, you wanna create generational wealth, and guess what? You're, you'll find one of two things. You'll find excuses and distractions, or you're gonna find reasons and opportunities. Your choice, which leads me to my third point. Elon Musk right now has turned into the world's best client and customer service engagement officer. That's correct. So he's involved. He's out there. He's putting things in motion. He's engaging with everybody. And guess what everybody's starting to feel? Jack Dorsey never did this. This CEO never did that. This CEO never did that. This CEO never did that. Why is this guy, Elon Musk, the CEO of four or five different companies, crushing it right now on client service and customer service engagement? Well, that's his thing. He's focused in on making sure that the experience that people have at Twitter is much different. Guess what? Client service, client service, client service. He puts out a tweet. What happens if we put a blue check and we charge you eight bucks a month to do it? Okay? Now check this out. Do the math. Numbers game. This is why he's obsessed with client service customer engagement. He wants to make sure if certain Twitter followers leave, account profiles close, guess what he's doing right now? Attracting new ones, bringing in new ones. See, that's how businesses grow. That's how churches grow. That's how organizations grow. Not people that's currently there, but people that you can flip, people that you can convert. If he attracts more people to come back and pay eight bucks a month, do the math. Seven or $8 million divided by 12, divided by eight bucks, guess what he needs to recoup? The $780 million. He needs 8.125 million people coming back to Twitter or that's currently on Twitter, convert them to blue tick marks by paying eight bucks a month. And guess what he's done? He's recouped the $780 million. Fantastic, isn't it? That's his mind. That's his move. He's creating community where we don't need advertisers. We have followers. We don't have bots. We actually have blue tick marks of actually live people actively paying eight bucks a month. They verify the profile, et cetera, et cetera. So hats off to Elon Musk by not being too busy to learn how to innovate Twitter to be something that people want to be a part of. Number four, Elon Musk values in-person workers, not remote workers. Remember one of the things he said over at Tesla, I said, no problem. I have no problem executives here at Tesla. I've got no problem if you want to work remotely, work from home, just not for Tesla. And I suspect that he's having that same type of awareness and disposition as released to his other companies. Uh, and speaking of the layoffs, over 3,700 people laid off here at Twitter. Uh, I think there was roughly 7,500 employees uh, before his acquisition. So almost half of everybody there at Twitter done laid off. And so here's the thing, he's cleaning house. We have a certain type of person that we wanna have work here. That's what he's basically trying to say. A type of person that's not gonna take beanbag lunch breaks all day, siphoning off public money invested into the company for lunch breaks and tea and snacks and all that stuff. He wants people working. And so when Elon Musk here is saying, listen, if you want to grow as an individual, you wanna grow as a leader, you wanna lead a movement, you believe in free speech, I prefer that you are in person. Here's why. If you wanna be irreplaceable, it's a few things to keep in mind. It's three things if you wanna be irre irreplaceable. Number one, you build your life on character. You build it on values, you build it on principles, you build your life on character. And by the way, well, character is one of those things you can't buy. You've had to build it up over your lifetime, over a body of work. You build your life on character. You do that, you become invaluable. Department strength, guess what that CEO is gonna do for somebody that's built their life and career on character? Guess what they're looking to do? They're gonna find a job for you. It may not even exist right now. The CEOs know that you are an invaluable person because you build your life on character, you're dependable, you're committed, you're obsessed about going your position, you're somebody that when you walk into the office that if you delegate to, you're impeccable with your work, guess what happens? Boom. They're gonna find a position for you. You work with speed, you work with increasing your skill set, you become invaluable. Second thing, you have a set of skills that people want around. You got hard skills, you know how to negotiate, you know how to sell, you know how to uh, build a department, you know how to analyze uh, balance sheets, you know how to eliminate waste, increase revenue. Those are hard skills. Third one, a little bit difficult, but it's an exponential skill set, is soft skills. How to be a good listener, how to be a good coach, how to help people get to the next level. Being a leader, when was the definition of leader? Helping people do things that they otherwise wouldn't have done themselves. Those are invaluable soft skills. And guess where you learn that? In person, around people, not looking at a box on a computer screen. You learn that in person. You learn that when the meeting's over, instead of just shutting off your computer and going back to the couch, you learn that walking out the boardroom, feeling humiliated or feeling inspired. Those are soft skills that's only learned in person. Certain things aren't taught, more things that matter 
are caught. And the last one, my biggest takeaway so far from Elon Musk, he's building a new culture. And thank goodness that there's a person here in the social media world, in, in the tech space in Silicon Valley that says, you know what? I believe in free speech, not suppression, not in violations, supposed violations, but man, I believe in free speech. I believe that everybody, regardless if I agree with them or not, should be able to voice their opinions. And when people are able to voice their opinions, that's when you and I, we both grow. We learn our voice, we hear from others' voices, we continue to build our voice, that's when you learn. And Elon Musk, salute to you for helping build a new culture to Silicon Valley and the business world. And here's my final thoughts overall. Oftentimes I talk to a lot of people that want to start a business and what a great time for you to start a business right now. So housing recession, high inflation, high interest rates, people are getting laid off, people have uncertainty in your life. Great time to start a business. But here's the thing, focus on one thing. Elon Musk focused on one thing. Focus on one thing. He focused on one thing in the late 90s, early 2000s. He focused on one thing before he reinvested his capital, his resources into multiple different companies. And by the way, they weren't all at the same time either. So when you're looking at building your career, looking to transition from your job to entrepreneurship, being self-employed to owning your own business, focus on one thing that you do well. Sell that t-shirt, sell that product, sell that insurance, sell that real estate, sell that legal services, sell one thing, whatever it is, master it, engross in it, immerse in it, learn the ins and outs of it, be obsessed with it, and make money with it. And then when you make money with it, reinvest back into this thing, keep compounding it, grow it, exponentially have it build, and then you have your big home run. And whatever that home run means to you, in terms of from a financial standpoint, is it a million bucks? Is it 10 million bucks? Is it 20 million bucks? Whatever that home run is defined by you, then you may have time to diversify into other streams of income. Oftentimes I see a lot of people, bing, 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 try this, try that, try that, try that. One foot in, one foot out, one foot in, one foot out. Distraction, distraction, shiny object, shiny object. And the whole time, they're not making any progress. They're not making any profit. But if you focus on one thing, guess what you learn how to do? You learn how to master that thing. You learn how to be a good operator. You learn how to be a good negotiator. You learn how to become a good leader. You learn what it takes to be obsessive in leading a department where you can delegate a system a process, a standard operating procedure for somebody to say, hey, if I'm if I'm no longer gonna do this, so therefore I can focus on this to elevate the business, I can hire a middle manager. I can hire a VP. I can hire a C-suite type of person to run this department for me, to run this division for me, so therefore I can work on growing, working on the business versus staying in the business. Focus in on that one thing. Make that money, make your hundreds of thousands of dollars, make your millions before diversifying time and attention and capital into other resources because what you'll find is you're not creating multiple streams of income, you're actually creating multiple distractions and sadly multiple trickers of cash. And that's what you don't want, especially going into 2023 if you want a different financial resolution and make 2023 a much different financial year than it was in 2022 or 2021. So being said, before I let you guys go, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Please put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out this other reaction video I had to Elon Musk and his advice to entrepreneurs and starting a business. Please check it out right here. That being said, if you watch a couple of other videos, if you've done so already, hit subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. And don't forget, make sure you pick up your copy of Faith Made Millionaire. It's Amazon bestseller in three different categories. I appreciate you guys' support. My best failures are in this book. So please learn from my mistakes. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart and be money smart today.